Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashutosh. That was quite an introduction. Even I felt a bit special about myself. <laughs> right? So, very good afternoon to everybody sitting in this hall and also to folks who might be watching us on a streaming platform. I am Rahi Prajapati and I currently work as an engineering manager for RTCAMP. I am not a designer. Uh, based on the title, you could be misled that I might be a designer, but I, I, uh, I have a developer background. So everybody is fueled up, everybody is energized, uh, everybody's tummies are full. Yeah? yeah? Very good. Because we have quite an interesting uh, topic here, so I hope you are not feeling sleepy, right? Getting your designer ready for Gutenberg. So we'll get started. Uh, I have cut down the session into three questions. One of the first question uh, you might be having while sitting here is, who is the intended audience uh, for this presentation or for this session? Right, like who could benefit the most out of this presentation? The second question you might have is, well, how, uh, why, uh, why exactly do you need to get your designer ready for Gutenberg? Since when designers need to worry about Gutenberg or where the designs are being implemented, right? And the last question, how exactly do you do it? If I am able to convince you through the second question, we will move to the third question, that is how exactly we do it. We will uh, go through a few pointers that will that are more relevant for the designers uh, to make the job easier and, and, and to help them with uh, creating something I call as Gutenberg compatible designs or Gutenberg efficient designs, right? So let's get started uh, with the very first question. Who is the intended audience of this presentation? So based on the title, you might feel that this may only be relevant for the designers because it quite literally says in the title that getting your designer ready for Gutenberg, and it doesn't say getting everybody ready for Gutenberg, <laughs> right? So before I uh, agree or disagree to that, can I know how many designers do we have in here? Can you please raise your hands? Okay. All right, uh, not as many as I had thought. So yeah, maybe this is for everybody. <laughs> okay, jokes aside, uh, I actually mean it. This is for everybody. Because even aside from being a developer, I believe you will get a different perspective about Gutenberg and the designs that we are creating for Gutenberg. All right. So on to the second question, why exactly do we need to worry about getting our designer uh, ready for Gutenberg? Maybe because I'm a developer and I want to do less work. I want my designers to do more work, <laughs> right? So Gutenberg, uh, as you all know, Gutenberg is the future for sure. Uh, right outside, there is a booth from uh, ThemeSpark. Shout out to ThemeSpark. They have this very introduction poll uh, where they are, they, have, they, are, they are collecting votes for who is using what between Classic Editor and Gutenberg, uh, Gutenberg uh, Block Editor. Right? And I saw that the Block Editor one was completely filled with the votes, red dots. Compared to, uh, compared to the Gutenberg, the classic editor had very less votes, right? So that made me very happy because it's in line with what I'm pitching here, right? So yeah, Gutenberg is the future here. And also with the introduction of the site editor, this becomes even more relevant because now everything on your website is a block. And during my career, uh, I have worked on quite some projects where I was supposed to implement a design and in Gutenberg. So while working on that, I always felt that 
maybe uh, if this little element had been to a had been designed a slightly differently, it could have reduced a lot of effort, right? So that's the motivation behind uh, behind this presentation. So we talked about the efforts uh, in a project. So those efforts were mainly of two kinds. First one being uh, extending the core Gutenberg itself. By this, I'm referring to adding any additional settings to the core blocks. And the second one was uh, creating or doing custom work uh, in, the, in Gutenberg. Right? By this, I'm referring to creating custom blocks or custom block patterns entirely from scratch. Right? So what we are trying to do here is we are trying to cut down those efforts by creating Gutenberg compatible designs designs that are much easier to implement in Gutenberg. And also, uh, this results in better user experience, because the designs you will create will eventually have very less cluttered uh, dashboard in the Gutenberg editor. So it also results in the better user experience. So as a designer, you are making impact in the designing phase, you are helping in the development phase, and you are also helping in the end, end product uh, to the end users. Right? So that's the motivation behind this presentation. On to the next question. So main question, since you are all are here, uh, I'm assuming that you all have this question. How exactly we do it? How exactly we get our designer ready for Gutenberg? What are the things that need to be considered while creating designs uh, that, can, that can create Gutenberg efficient designs? Right? So we will learn about a few constructs and properties about Gutenberg. And then we will also go through a few concepts that are in Gutenberg that I think are relevant for this session. Because I believe, though, under, uh, I believe having an understanding about those topics will hugely benefit uh, benefit the designers, right? So, do not worry about these four. Uh, we will go through all of them one by one. So, on to the first one: uh, componentized nature and reusability in Gutenberg. So. Gutenberg has this componentized nature. By that, I mean uh, Gutenberg pages are created using a unit or uniform element, the smallest uh, atomic element called block. Right? All entire Gutenberg layouts are created using blocks. You can move around the blocks. You can reuse the blocks. So same block can be used at multiple, uh, multiple places and it can behave the same. So we will uh, go through that as well, how this present, uh, how this uh, layouts are created in Gutenberg. So we will see an example of a hero section uh, of a site. So I will first try and break this down for you, how you can create this layout in Gutenberg. Right? You could make use of the columns block for breaking this whole layout into two sections uh, from the middle. From the, uh, on, the right, on the right column, you could just simply add an image block. And on the left side, you could add heading, a paragraph, and two hyperlinked images. Right? So just talks. Uh, I also have the demo of me actually doing this. So yeah. As you can see, I have the hyperlinked images already present. I add the heading block. I will uh, copy paste the text in the paragraph. And I select the image on the right side. So the motive behind this is uh, it's important to understand what is, and, uh, what is easily achievable in Gutenberg without doing any custom development work, 
right? As a designer, you could create designs that are very easily achievable or that can be very easily created in Gutenberg without requiring any custom development work. And the second reason is uh, you, you, you also get an idea about Gutenberg, so how the designs that you created will be actually implemented in Gutenberg by the user or by the developers. So that was quite an easy uh, layout that we achieved using Gutenberg core blocks. Now we will see another example of a hero section uh, of a website, right? As you can see, here we have these images stretching out of the container. Now this kind of layout is quite difficult to achieve using only the core blocks or it's almost impossible to achieve. Mm -hmm. And even if you just, even if you are able to like hack around your way and make use of a bunch of group blocks and cover blocks, and even if you achieve this layout, that's not the user experience we want our end users to have. That's not the user experience we want uh, our, our users to have with Gutenberg, right? So yeah. So from the componentized nature and reusability, we understood that it's not only about creating layouts that are easily achievable, but it's also important to understand what are the, which, are the, which, which kind of the designs that will be a bit difficult to achieve using only core blocks and without requiring any custom uh, or extra additional engineering work. Right, so on to the next concept in Gutenberg, block styles. So in simplest terms, block styles is a different version of the same block, but it, uh, the different version in terms of only the visuals, the content remains the same, right? So I will show this uh, with an example of the core image block, right? Uh, as you can see, the image block has two block styles. One is the default, and second one is the rounded one. So as you can see, while I'm toggling between these two block styles, the first one has sharp images, uh, sorry, sharp edges, and the uh, second one, the rounded block style has rounded edges. So with block styles, you cannot change entire image. You cannot have a different image. So as I said, the content remains the same, but only the visual changes, right? Let's understand this uh, with one more example of a core block, which is social icons. So this one has three block styles, default, logos only, and peel shape. As you can see, uh, it just changes the visuals. You can style the block differently using block style, but you do not directly change the content of a block, uh, of a block. right? So the takeaway of, uh, of this, of understanding this concept of block style is instead of creating two separate custom blocks, let's say if I wanted to, if I, if, if I had designed one section of social icons at two different places, at one place, maybe I have all of these icons, and at second place, maybe I have only three of them, and maybe I could have a different order. I might have placed a different order of the icons in the second place. So that would likely uh, make the developer create two separate custom blocks instead of one single custom block, and uh, uh, which has two different block styles, right? So. With block styles, what you are doing is you are reducing the custom engineering efforts, and uh, you're also creating a much better user experience because having to search through all of the blocks and having two different blocks for the same purpose is not a great user experience compared to having a single block which has two different block styles and just toggling between them. Right? So. On to the next, uh, on to the next concept. Sorry, not not next concept. Uh, we will see one more example uh, for the same block styles. 
let's say as a designer you want to create uh, you want to create testimonial section uh, on a website right so you have same testimonial section on two different pages on one page uh, maybe you want it to look a certain way and based on the design requirements on the other one you want it to look a different way so maybe on the first one you have created it this way you have designed it this way it's a slider it's a carousel you can uh, scroll through the different testimonials and on the other one maybe you have decided to just create a three column layout for the testimonials right so maybe you you might have thought that uh, since i said that block styles have the same data and different visual representation this might be a good fit for block styles but that's not really the case because achieving this layout using block styles would be difficult because there will be javascript involved uh, in the in the first one which is a carousel so as a designer how do you identify this kind of edge cases how do you decide uh, when when would be when would it be possible using block styles and would when would it not be possible using block styles because you do not understand uh, any of the coding so you will not know how this will be implemented so one simple suggestion i would give is try and not have many differences between two versions in terms of interactivity how user interacts with the block and in terms of different elements you can reorganize elements uh, but try and keep them safe uh, keep them same all right so on to the next uh, concept of gutenberg which is block patterns right so in simple terms block patterns are nothing but a bunch of blocks grouped together and we make them available as a single entity for the user uh, in the, in the first or uh, in the previous slides we saw that we were creating a layout using the blocks inserting one block after the other manually so instead of that what you could do is you could create a block pattern and you could create a block pattern named hero section maybe and uh, that whole whole block pattern would be available for the user so with a single click user will be able to add all of the blocks automatically inserted into the content right so we'll see an example of block patterns yeah as you can see uh, on the left hand side we have a bunch of block patterns available for me and out of those i am selecting this one so on a single click i have all of these elements or blocks inserted into the layout instead of me having to go through different blocks uh, toggling between different settings to adjust the width and everything i just have one single click and everything is there for you right so as a designer maybe if you knew about block patterns what you could do is you could break down your design into different block patterns and you could help identify your uh, developer that this is how you have created the design and this could be a block pattern so that would also result in a better user experience right so on to the next concept uh, style guide and the theme.json file so we designers sorry not we designer <laughs> i'm not a designer sorry uh, so designers create these style guides uh, for the developer to easily understand uh, what's going on right it has different color palettes it may have or uh, different fonts typography so in gutenberg uh, there is this concept of theme.json file it's a json file uh, just it's a json configuration file using which you could control various aspects of your website it controls the uh, site editor and block editor controls 
you know, which are the settings that are available to the user and which are the color palette or which are the colors that are available for the user. So you can control those things uh, using this theme.json file. So what you could do is you could, in your style guide, uh, help your developer with all of this color palette. You could help them with the typography, and you could also help them with the spacing presets. So one of the things uh, that are there in, in theme.json file is you need to name the colors. You need to name the spacing. Right, so since you have created the design, you better know which color is which color holds what importance in the design, right? Which is the primary color, which is the secondary color, which is the accent color. So, in the design itself, if you provide with this information, it would be very easy to implement this uh, in the theme.json file, and this would also. Uh, the developer would also be able to easily implement this and the end user also so as a designer basically you are able to control what the end user gets in terms of which are the colors that are available in terms of which are the different spacing uh, spacing presets that are available so you kind of control uh, the website's visual, or you kind of restrict in a good way, <laughs> right? You kind of restrict the user, so there is uniformity on the website's visuals. So, yeah, um, that will be it. Uh, thank you so much. If anybody has any questions or thoughts, please let me know.